Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Kat. And I'm Jess. And today we are talking about number 194, The Wages of Fear, which is an adventure drama thriller from 1953. This has an 8.1 on 48,963 votes. We're going to continue with our new little segment here of our mystery line. So I have taken out the orange since we did orange last week. So the colors are purple, light blue, red, green, and dark blue. Let's go with red. Red. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. I'll read it one more time. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. So, make sure you contact us on social media if you think you know what that movie is. Alright, so the spoiler-free synopsis. In the South American jungle, supplies of nitroglycerin are needed at a remote oil field. The oil company pays four men to deliver the supplies in two trucks. A tense rivalry develops between the two sets of drivers on the rough remote roads where the slightest jolt can result in death. I apologize in advance. These are some of these are French names, so we'll see how it goes. Okay. We've had this director before. Um, his name is Henry Georges Clouseau, and we saw him with 223, Diablique. Um, he also did Inferno and Manon. Yep. And this stars Yves Montand, Charles Vanel, and Foco Lulini. Apologize for the names. <laughs> and we also get an actress that we've seen before yes, from Diabolique. Uh, uh, Vera Luzo, who is married to the director. She only did three films, and this is her second one on the list. Yeah. The ratings... On IMDb, 28.8% of users rated this at an 8. Um, there are no ratings on Metacritic, but on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 100% on 44 critical reviews. Two of the fresh are Dave Kerr, turning the screws with the relentlessness that impresses even in this age of ruthless high-tech thriller. Clouseau strings together situations of vividly, almost sadistically imagined danger. I guess. Okay. Sure. <sighs> Jonathan Rosenbaum. A significant influence in Peckapaz, The Wild Bunch, this grueling pile driver of a movie will keep you on the edge of your seat. Eh... Uh. I can't agree. Um, and like wanting wanting to get up and go do something else, yeah. Yeah, that's that's how I felt too. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'll get into that in a little bit. <laughs> so the consensus, an existential suspense classic, The Wages of Fear blends nonstop suspense with biting satire. Its influence is still being felt on today's thrillers. Okay. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> we'll get into it a little bit. Not yet. <laughs> so, the money. I could not find much, but it's gross worldwide. It made $1,098. Wow. That's it? That's all I could find. <laughs> oh. So the awards. This won six total awards. It won the BAFTA Award for Best Film from Any Source. In the Berlin International Film Festival. Golden Berlin Bear. Henry George Clausel won that. Blue Ribbon Awards, Best Foreign Language Film. The Cannes, Grand Prize of the Festival. Uh, Clouseau won that as well. Special Mention, Charles Vanell for his 
acting performance. And then the French Syndicate of Cinema Critics Best Film. So that's all the awards. Um, initial thoughts. Can I go first? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. This movie. I was telling Cap, before we started recording, I felt like I lost two and a half hours of my life. It was that yeah. bad. Yes. This movie could have cut down to an easily an hour and a half, maybe? Yeah. Because, like, a whole hour of it could have been, like, it was just nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. Like, I was getting irritated. Like, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, there's explosives. Let's have somebody die. Come on. And, like, these characters are not someone you're going to connect to at all. No. I was more rooting for them to die most of the time. <sighs> I was like, die already. But that's me. I didn't like this at all. At all. And I'm surprised it had such a high rating. It should not even be on the list at all. That's how bad it is. Um, For me, I liked it better than Ben-Hur. But I also felt that it was unnecessarily long. They could have cut out that first hour and just done the truck stuff. We, Their character building was not done very well. If you're going to character build, you need to give us some attachment to the characters rather than just make us hate all of them. <laughs> I hated them all. And it was so freaking, like, sexist, too. Yeah. Like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, I appreciated the suspense he was trying to build. There was only one part that I thought was, like, super suspenseful. And even then, it wasn't, like, as suspenseful as some other stuff that I've seen. Because, um, like, it, once they got started in the trucks, it was just, like, he was doing all suspense and not really giving you any, re like, not trying to give you any relief from it. And there was only one part of that that I actually was like, oh, that was kind of suspenseful. That made me think, oh, are they going to get out of it? But that was just about one five-minute segment of a two-and-a-half-hour movie. So... <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't yeah. I wasn't a big fan of it. This is with me ranked as low as Hachi. Okay. In around Paris, Texas. That's how much I hated it. I didn't hate it that much. I liked it better than Ben Hur, but it's not like way up there for me. No. This is it's gonna be a competition now between those three. <laughs> That's how oh my god. Yeah. I was cussing at the end. <laughs> I did. I threw my... I watched it on the computer. I threw my headphones off, and I was like, fucking finally. <laughs> but that was me. I'm, all my roommates heard that, too. That's funny. That was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening and come back after you've watched it. So we start off, we see some bugs. And I thought this guy was singing, but he's actually um, yelling about shaved ice. Yes! I was like, I was like and it was all in Spanish, too. Yeah. Because there's not just French in this movie. There's Spanish, there's English, there's French. I mean, yeah, different languages. I think it's actually got six total languages, but the main language is French. It's got French, English, Spanish, German, Italian, and Russian. Not that I could um, differentiate when they were speaking the other, like, I couldn't tell when they were speaking the German or the Russian. The Italian and the Spanish, I could kind of differentiate because there was only one character that spoke Italian. Uh, the French and the Spanish were super easy to distinguish. And then, of course, English. Yeah. I would agree with you on that. But, of course, it's easier for me to recognize the French because this is, what, our sixth? Let me look. I think this is our sixth French film. Let's see. I have it here. One, two, 
three. This is our fifth French film. So, it, I'm being able to pick out French. So that was able. I was able to do that. I I know how to pick out Spanish really well. Yeah, I can so. pick out Spanish because I hear it almost every day. Yeah, and I was laughing at most of the Spanish because it's not great translation. Yeah. Because most of the curse words are different in the translation, and I just laughed. Yeah. I was like, that's not what that means. Nice try. I know better. But the German and the Russian. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Whenever they spoke it, it was definitely something that I couldn't differentiate there. And then there was only the one character that spoke Italian. So. Um, so there's this little boy and he's playing with the bugs. And he's in this little village and stuff. And he stands up and all he's got is a shirt on. And the director makes sure that we know that because um, we see everything. There's a lot of naked people. I felt for no reason. Yeah, I think. But, so, we're in this, we're following this little, uh, he's pushing this trolley with ice cream or shaved ice or whatever in it, calling out the different flavors and stuff, and he's got this dog tied up to it, and I was just like, that poor dog, like, I was already pissed off at this movie. Yeah. Because that dog, all of his fur is, like, coming off, and then the dude's, there's a dude sitting there throwing rocks at him. That was strike one for me. Yeah, I was I was just done. But, so basically the next hour is the character development. Well, trying to be character <laughs> development. Mostly you just develop a hate for everybody. I mean, that's some character development. I guess. Because you didn't know anything about the characters to begin with. You didn't like them or you didn't hate them. So then you developed a hate for them. Character development. It's like I wanted most of them to die. Well, guess what? I know. <laughs> I was very happy at the end. I will say that. <laughs> so, yeah, we meet Linda, which is played by Vera Cluzo, which we had her in Diabolique, like we mentioned, and she is also the director's wife. She is, like, I guess the maid or something at this little pub place. Yeah, she's cleaning the floors and all that. Yeah, and she's flirting with Mario, which <laughs> I really liked that we had Mario and Luigi in this movie. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> but they were kind of backwards. Because Luigi was the Mario-looking one, and Mario was the Luigi-looking one. Yeah. But Linda is flirting with Mario... And then all of Mario and his friends get kicked out because they're just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. And Linda's like, oh, are you going to come tonight? Like, they have a date or something. And he's just, like, so rude to her and she just doesn't even care. So rude. I'm like, dude, you're such an asshole. Yeah. And then we meet... Well, she gets sent up to the room, uh, the room of the... I guess, tavern owner guy, because he's going to do what he wants. And she just goes up there and does it, I guess. I, she yeah. Just walks on up, oh, walks on up there. <sighs> tavern owner guy goes out back looking for Bimba. And he is sleeping in a hammock when he's supposed to be off taking the mail to the plane or something like that. I barely caught names, so... Bimbo was the blonde one. I know, oh, but okay. I just, I stopped caring. Yeah, so, I, they only caught, like, five names. I caught Mario's name, like, where the hell did I, like, when they started, like, driving. That's when I caught his name. Like, That's the first the time they said his name. Okay, good. I was like. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know his name until then. Like, an hour into the fucking movie. Yeah, Bimba, they said his name immediately at the beginning of the movie. And I thought they were calling him Bimbo. <laughs> but then I realized it was an A. But so we see the, this plane land and all these people get out. And there's a guy with a little parrot and then there's a guy with a goat. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. He had a goat. But yeah, it was, that was a interesting. Goat. 
So then we see this guy in a white suit get off and um, he takes out his passport and puts $10 into his um, passport and then puts it back in his pocket. Totally gonna bribe the customs people. Yeah. Because, you know, he's probably, you know, like, a wanted guy. So you're Which, thinking, and... Yeah. yeah. And then, um, we also... I forgot that there was, um, the Italian guy. I don't know what his name is. I just know they call him... Or no, I think his name was Bernardo or something like that. They said it later. Like, way later. Well, yeah. But... Bernardo, he was trying to get somebody to sneak him onto the plane with the bags because he wanted to go to America. And he was saying that he had his papers. I'm like, well, if you're trying to go to America and you have your papers, why are you trying to sneak onto the plane? Maybe not to buy a ticket or something. I don't know. Something. I don't know. But the uh, guy in the white suit, we eventually learned that his name is Joe. And he goes up to the customs guy, and the custom guy opens up his um, passport and sees the $10, takes it, but he has also opened this, like, little book of people that are not allowed to travel or something, I guess. And we... It looks kind of like the same picture from the passport to the picture of the guy in the little book thing of not allowed to travel people. Yeah. So I think that they were implying it was the same. That's what I got to from it. Then he gets cleared because, you know, he bribed him. And so he's in a taxi. And there's a traffic jam because a donkey won't move out of the way. It happens in small towns like that. I'm just like, okay. I mean, I've got stuck on the road before because cattle were crossing it. It happens. Yeah. It does. But the way that it looked in this movie, I was like, there's more than enough room for that car to go around that donkey. Oh, yeah. And yet they are stopped. Yeah. (laughs) So I was just like, what? <laughs> but so he stops at the taxi stop, which is in the middle of this big, huge puddle. And there's kids out begging for food. And I'm just like, you're in this dirty, dusty little town in a white suit. You're not very smart. <laughs> nah. But, um,. Mario comes over and recognizes Joe, and so they are talking for a minute, and then they get into the taxi to literally go 20 feet to the tavern. They're, like, whistling, too. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I I don't know. And... I was like, I'm like, is this a code or something? Or, I don't know, they're just whistling at each other really loudly. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. Why not? And then when they get out of out the tavern, Joe makes the tavern owner guy pay for the taxi. Yeah. And nobody seems to know who he is. And I'm like, why would you pay for the taxi in the first place? Then, why would you pay for the taxi if you didn't even know who he was? It's like, this is stupid. Um... So they're in the tavern, and we find out Joe doesn't like music. Then some old guy turns it on anyways. And then there's, like, this little off-on, off-on fighting thing. Um. Then there's something about a funeral. Like, I don't even know where the funeral came from. Like, they're- Yeah. I just- I was- They just- didn't make any sense with this entire first hour of the movie. Because we had met Luigi at some point in here. I don't remember where. Because Mario and Luigi... <laughs> <laughs> they live together. Yeah, they were, they were roommates. <laughs> which is awesome. But then, apparently, Luigi moved out... And now Joe lives with Mario, and now Luigi is jealous of Joe 
because he lives with Mario. And I'm just like, what in the world? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel about this whole freaking movie, so. Trying to restrain myself a little bit from my bitching. <laughs> just a little bit. And, uh, it was, Mario was telling, uh, during this whole their funeral shit that, uh, saying that it's really hard to find work and everything, and, uh, it's hard to leave because you can't find any work and everything costs so much, and it's, life's just really rough there, and, um, there's oil there, though. Yeah, like 300 miles away, they said there's an oil thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, because the Americans are here with your own oil and stuff. Like, yeah. The uh, Southern Oil Company. There's a lot of anti-American thing in this movie, too. (laughs) Lots of anti-American. Like, a lot of anti-USA stuff. Like, okay, okay, sure. I can understand that at any point in time. Oh, I can, too. Everyone hates America. Well, yeah. (laughs) Everybody. I mean, I think we've all accepted that at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Mario has a date with Linda, but he said he has to go do something with Joe, or go get a haircut with Joe or something like that. And I'm just like, so you're gonna go with this dude to get a haircut instead of going on a date. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense, because he doesn't really seem to like Linda anyways. So. Because he's an asshole. Yeah. And it's like, and there's also, uh, Joe meets with, uh, O'Brien. Try to, yeah. like, get some work or something. I don't know. Yeah. Then, oh, Luigi finds out that, um, he comes in to the apartment or whatever that him and Mario used to live in and sees that Joe is wearing his pants and he gets mad about the pants. And then they're at the tavern and Joe and Mario are sitting down kind of just hanging out. And then Luigi comes in and is like, I'm gonna buy champagne for everybody. And he asks Linda to dance and all the, he turns on the music and everything. And so they're dancing and Joe breaks the radio. So Luigi starts singing and then everybody starts singing. And then the, uh, Joe and Luigi like kind of come at each other. Joe's got a gun, and Luigi has a champagne bottle. Yeah, because Joe sprayed the champagne bottle all over, all over everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Shook it up and sprayed them all. I thought that was funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that sucks. I was like, kind of a dick move. This is why I don't like you. I don't like any of them. I no. think the one I liked the most was Luigi, just because he was kind of funny. He's the only one that I was like, eh, he's somewhat likable. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not even gonna go there. So Luigi ends up leaving, and then the next day, I'm guessing, yeah. there's a woman outside preaching about this fire that had happened, and this is where we get the anti-American stuff, you know, yeah, against America. I are saying okay. that oh, they only use their people to eat for their work so they don't have to waste any of their lives and all of that and like 13 people died and everything and yeah and then the truck pulls up with um some of the wounded people and they're like all storming at the truck because there was a fire at the oil rig and then we see bill is on the phone talking to somebody about the fire that's happening he says, blame it on the victims. Like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, see, see, you're just promoting this anti, like, U.S. stuff. That's why everybody hates us. Yeah. <laughs> he has a meeting about what they're going to do. And that's when the they talk about the nitroglycerin and how they need to get it over there. And I'm just like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, I feel like getting nitroglycerin, which is, a, like, an explosive, over to a fire is not a good idea. That's what I thought, too. I'm like, okay, so we're just gonna make it worse? Yeah. Okay, why not? 
And then he's like, well, we're just going to hire these bums out here to come and work and drive the trucks. Yeah. So one of the workers, the, one of the American workers died, they did say. Yeah, because he was, like, full of burns. Yeah. There's a truck driving through the little town that Mario and Luigi and Joe and Bimba work, or not work in, but live in. And they're, the truck is, like, announcing that they need people to come drive trucks. And then we see Luigi at the doctor, and the doctor saying that Luigi's gonna die. His lungs are full of cement. And I was just well, like, why are you eating cement? <laughs> I'm like, I'm guessing it's from all the dust from it. I don't know. Yeah. Because he, we did see him and he is a cement worker, so. Somehow. Or he was just a dummy and he was eating it. Something like that. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But, so there's a whole bunch of guys in this room and they're talking about how the job's going to be dangerous and stuff like that. And there's a pretty good possibility that you're going to die. And Bill says that you have to prove yourself as a driver. Because he's only going to have four drivers. Yeah. That's it. And then, so they're doing a little testing and... The Italian is the first guy to go, and he didn't do very well, so he got kicked out. And he's upset, and he runs off. Then we find out that Bimba, Luigi, Mario, and Smurloff, which is like an old guy, get the job. Um, Joe's still standing in the room when he tells the rest of them that, like, they, what time they need to be there and stuff. And then Joe stays after they all leave and talks to Bill, and Bill's like, you're too old. And I'm just like, what about the other old dude? Nah. Joe's too old. I was like, the other old dude looks older than Joe does. Yeah. So they go back to the tavern and have some drinks, uh, cause they're leaving in the morning to go do their driving. Linda doesn't want Mario to go, but he's gonna do it anyways cause he doesn't care about her. No. He's a complete asshole. This is where we get... Uh, Bernardo, which is the Italian. So I did write it down. This is the only time we hear his name. Yeah. And he has this letter that he wants mailed, and then he goes outside because he's upset he didn't get the job. But in the letter, because we saw him writing it, um, it says that he did get a job. So if you don't hear from him for a while, that's why. And then... Uh, so everybody else is celebrating and stuff, and then Linda is upset, so she goes outside, and we see this guy hanging from the tree. Yeah. Like, just his feet. Yeah, she lights a candle. She didn't see him at first. She lights this candle, she starts praying, and then she looks up and sees it. Yeah. And it was Bernardo. He hung himself because, I guess, things just weren't going his way. Nope, so he decides to kill himself. Yeah. Um... So then, I guess it's the next night, or, like, later that night, right when they're about ready to leave. And, uh, the guys are all getting dressed. Smurloff, the old guy, doesn't show up. But Joe does, while they're all getting ready. And he's like, well, where is this dude? Yeah, Luigi says that he saw Joe and, uh, was it Smurloff? Go, um, walk out together. So. Yeah. I'm guessing, uh, Joe said something or did something, so that dude didn't show up at all. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't say at all what happens, so you can then kind of imply whatever you want, I guess. I think he killed him. I think so, too, but I don't know. Like, he's not a very nice man, so I can see that. Yeah. So, they, um, Bill says that Joe can go anyway. 
And so the trucks show up. And we've, they've got the guys loading the nitro onto the truck. And there's a sign on the back of the truck that I think is very important. It says, no smoking within 50 feet. <laughs> and guess how many of them smoke in the truck? So All many of, of them. All of them. All of them. I'm like, that's super smart. Okay, let's light a flammable thing right next to a big old truck full of explosives. Yeah, I was like, you're gonna not jiggle the truck, because you don't want any of the stuff to get out and explode. But you're gonna smoke in the truck, because, oh, that's not gonna make it explode. Like, all, everything just out the window for this movie here. Completely. All logic, really. Yeah. It's all gone. All of it. Yeah, and I was listening to these trucks as they're starting, and I'm like, okay, I know enough basics to know those trucks don't really sound that good. Yeah. They don't. They're like, oh, they're brand new. I'm like, that's full of shit. Yeah. They don't and sound good at all. They really don't. But they do, like, a um, coin flip to see which truck gets to go first, because there's one truck that gets to go 30 minutes before the other truck. And, um, Mario and Joe get paired up, and Luigi and Bimba get paired up. So, I was referring to them as Mario and Waluigi and Luigi and Wario. Because it was more fun that way. I just started doing initials at this point. I was trying to entertain myself. (laughs) I just stopped caring. So... They get going, and I swear, Joe is, like, driving two miles an hour. So slow. And I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. And it's so slow that Linda can jump up on top onto the truck and beg them not to go. Yeah. I'm just like, you are joking. Because it's just, they... And it's like that almost the entire way through the movie. (sighs) How slow they're driving. But they stop because apparently Joe isn't feeling well. Yeah. (laughs) And he says he has malaria. And I'm just like, you don't have malaria. You're just scared. You're just scared out of your mind. You're a little baby. It's like, he's like got these, like, you know, he's like, Tom comes out this big old tough guy, but really he's a big freaking coward. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that character development, like, went out the freaking window, did it? Yeah. And so, the other truck is coming up. And we see in the other truck, Bimba is smoking, and I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. How are you going to smoke when it says no smoking on your freaking truck? Don't care. That's really what that is. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I'm going to die anyways. Pretty much. Um, but so the other truck, um, Bimba and Luigi's truck passes Mario and Joe's truck. And um, we hear about this area where it's super, super bumpy and they have to go 40 miles an hour over the bumps because if they go less than 30 miles an hour, they're going to feel the bumps. And I'm like, I don't think that's how bumps work. They're like, you glide over it, I guess. I'm like, okay. That's that's not how they work. (laughs) I was like, technically, if it's going to be a bumpy road, it's going to be a bumpy road. Yeah, it doesn't matter how fast you're going to go over it. It's (laughs) like, no, technically, if you go faster, it might make it worse. Yeah. Well, I, I mean... I have lived out in the county, and I know you've driven on, like, dirt roads and stuff like that, so you know how it is. I grew up in the country. There you go. I know exactly how it is. I was like, you know exactly what we're talking about. We're like, that's not how that works. Yeah. At all. But okay, for the people that don't know shit about that, sure, that would work. (sighs) Yeah. Um, but so, (laughs) Luigi and Bimba get to 
the washboard area, as they call it, but the truck is making a funny noise, so they have to stop and fix it real quick. But then they could get going, and they just kind of speed over all the bumps. And Mario and Joe stopped again, because Joe's freaking out. And then they're talking about the washboard area that's coming up in front of them. And then we see Luigi and Bimba get to this curve, and they're like, oh, we're going too fast to get around this curve. And I'm just like, then slow down. Stop going so fast. But I just, this, all the physics in this movie are just wrong. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe is driving when they get to the little washboard area. And he can't make up his mind whether or not he's going to go fast or he's going to go slow. He keeps, like, speeding up and slowing down and speeding up and slowing down. And then he finally stops. And then Mario is freaking out on him. And then they were, like, about to get stuck in the mud because... Of how Joe was driving. And so, like, <sighs> Mario, the asshole, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to switch. I'm driving. Yeah. Because you're a little wimp. You're a freaking coward. I'm driving. Dude, like, hauls ass, too. Yeah, I'm going, like, 60 miles an hour. And then they catch up to the other truck because the other truck had to stop because it was making the funny noise. And they were driving slow. Yeah. And so, what almost happens, I'm like, this would have been fine with me if this ended right here. Um, so, the other truck driving real fast, the other one driving real slow, they get real close to each other, and then the other one just kind of just speeds off. I'm guessing yeah. that was supposed to be a suspenseful thing, and I'm like, just blow up already. <laughs> Come on, I want to see an explosion. But no. Not yet. I have to wait. Another, like, 45 minutes or something. God. So, then, um, they get to, um, Luigi and Bimba get to this, like, weird turn thing. Because Mario and Joe have once again stopped. And they don't know how to keep going to save their life. But... Bimba and Luigi have gotten to this, like, weird turn where they have to, like, pull kind of forward and then back up onto this rickety bridge thing. And I th felt like this was what was most suspenseful of everything, even though it wasn't really done too well. But this is the one that I was just like, okay, if they had done this a little bit better, it might have been suspenseful. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on this one. This, this whole entire thing with this, like, um, it's like this bridge thing that kind of halfway sticks out over this cliff and Bimba and Luigi are on the little bridge thing and the one of the boards breaks and so Luigi has to get out and Bimba is driving and stuff and they manage to get out of it and then they're like well we have to warn the others so they are trying to figure out a way to warn the others um, and they some they, like, use these sticks or something to build, like, this little pyramid teepee thing right over it. So that way when the others come up, they see that there's a hole. So then Mario and Joe get to it, and Joe's like, no, we're not doing this. We might as well just go back. And he's, and Mario's like, well, they got over it, so we can get over it. And Joe is actually trying to use some logic at this point. And he's like, our truck is bigger and heavier than theirs was. Once. Yeah. So I don't know how well it's gonna work. Yeah, but they do it anyway, and so Joe is back there on the bridge thing and trying to get, like, tell uh, Mario where he needs to stop before he's too far back and he's going to fall off the little bridge thing. Of course, and... the dude doesn't listen either. <laughs> yeah, well, he's in the truck, and the, sh the truck bed's huge, and the truck's really loud so he's not gonna be able to hear him so it seems like because he knocks this like weird wheelbarrow thing off the bridge and joe was standing right in front of it so it seems like maybe he knocked him off as well and he stops the truck right on the edge and then he gets out and he's like looking for joe and everything and he can't find him 
And then he finally does find him. He's climbing up the hill, getting away from me. He's like, I'm done with this crap. Like, leaving and stuff. And then... Mario manages to get... He gets back in the truck after griping at Joe. And he's trying to get going, but the truck has, like, no grip. It's the same thing happened with... um, Luigi and Bimba, there was, like, no grip or anything. So he puts some sticks under the wheels the same way that Luigi and Bimba did, and then he gets going, but the there's this hook caught on the cords that are holding the edge of the bridge up. Yeah. And he's going, not realizing that the rope is caught on the hook on the truck, and the rope gives way, or, like, the clasp thing on the rope gives way, and then the bridge falls. Yeah, just as he, you know, miraculously gets back onto the, like, the edge of the cliff. Yeah. I'm like, and that's why I said, like, this was the most suspenseful part. Like, this was almost enough to keep me slightly interested. Almost. It was done good, but it doesn't, it wasn't done up to the standards that I thought it would be. And I mean, like, maybe it's just because it is older and I've seen things like that happen before, that maybe I was just like, oh, it's not quite where I thought it was going to be. So, but they did a decent job of making this suspenseful. It's because your standards are higher. Yeah. So, they get going, and Joe is trying to get back in the truck, but he doesn't stop. Mario doesn't stop. And then after a minute or two, he does stop and lets Mario back in, but he's mad at him. And then Luigi and Bimba come across this big boulder that's in the way. So Bimba's like, well, let's just blow it up. It's like, we got stuff to blow things up. Let's do it. Yep. So they're working on getting it set up to be able to blow it up. And then the other truck shows up. And then it seems like Bimba's going to sacrifice himself the way he's talking. And I'm just like, um, okay, why can't you just light it and run away? I mean, he does do that, but it does sound like he's trying to sacrifice himself. I'm like, okay, you do you. Yeah. So they get it all set up to blow it up, and then they back the trucks up. But they don't back them up far enough. They're like, oh, what about the rocks that are going to fall? I'm just like, you guys are really freaking stupid, aren't you? Yeah. You're just stupid. Very, very stupid. So Luigi's like, oh, I'll just go pull the string out before it blows up. And I'm like, it's literally going to blow up any second, and you're going to run over there. Because you're smart. Yeah. So the the rock blows up. Somehow, miraculously, the little rocks miss the cans. Every single one of them. Because, you know, the movies. Yeah. So they all go run to check on Luigi because they are pretty sure he's dead because he ran over towards the blast. But he's just knocked out. Yeah. And then the boulder's gone. So they're going to have a celebratory pee on the rock. Well, where the rock was. (sighs) And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Really? Yeah. Ugh. I was, I wrote down, I'm like, are you freaking serious? Like, well, at first I did, I couldn't, didn't quite understand what they were doing because they didn't specify it exactly that way. And I just saw <laughs> Luigi messing with his pants. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I was like, I figured it out. And I'm like, are you kidding? Really? Is this all you? Ugh. Well, yeah, once they showed Mario and Bimba starting messing with their pants, I was like, oh, okay, I know what you're doing now. But the first thing you see is freaking Luigi, like, messing with his pants like he's about to, to no. <laughs> I was just like, I don't want to see that. That's something you do on your own time. That was just, I'm like, ugh, you're such boys. Oh, my God. Yeah. How old are you? I see little kids doing that. Not a full-grown adult, but apparently you're children. So, Bimba and Luigi get going, and Mario and Joe are arguing again. Yeah. <clears throat> so they get going. But then they see this explosion up ahead, and it turns out it was the other truck. 
Yeah. It was funny. Joe jumps out. It was crazy because right before the explosion happened, um, you see Bimba's shaven. Yeah. And Luigi's like, man, you got some balls there, dude. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, he's, I was pretty sure there wasn't actually a uh, razor in that because there was no way that, that actor was going to be doing that that fast in a bumpy truck. Exactly. So there was no way there was a razor in that. He was just using the side of the the um, thing to get this shaving cream off. <sighs> but so Joe jumps out of the truck when he sees the explosion. He's like, I'm done. I'm not dying. And Mario stops him and goes after him and kind of they threaten each other. And then Mario throws a rock at him. They fight a little bit, too. Yeah. Then they come up to this big, huge, like, messed up area, and that's where the other truck blew up. There's, like, nothing left of it, too. Yeah, there's, like, broken trees, and then a broken pipe that's spewing oil. And I actually wouldn't say spewing oil. Honestly, it looks like there's someone on the other end of it just using, a like, a water pump to pump it out. Because a pipe like that would constantly be flowing, and it's just, like, kind of spurting every now and then. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. First of all, I was like, wait, is this oil, or is this really dirty water? It's supposed to be oil. It didn't look like it. Consistency-wise, it didn't look like it. Little uh, little uh, trivia here with this. You know what they used to make that? What? Water and ground-up animal bones. <laughs> okay. I'm okay so, with So, yeah, that. it was really dirty water. So, I was right. Yeah, it was supposed to be oil, but... It didn't look like oil. Yeah. It looked, reminded me of, like, when I was younger. Playing in mud. Playing in the mud in the ditch. Yeah. That same. kind. Same. Okay. See, so you get me. All right, we're good. So, Mario's like, well, we have to we have to go. We have to get through this. And so they see how deep the water is, or the oil is, and it's really not that too, not too deep. So they're like, oh, we could just drive through it. And this is another point where they're trying to be suspenseful, but this one didn't really work for me because that truck is moving like two miles an hour to get through this mud. Joe is in there. He gets caught on this stick and you're like, okay, you've got some time to get out of the way. Nah. And he, but he gets run over instead. Yeah, his leg gets run over. And I think this is kind of funny how this looks too. Yeah. His leg, I <laughs> laughed so hard at this. The practical effects on his leg were not done very well. And I'm like... Okay, so it's trying to look like your leg is so broken, it's kind of hanging there. Yeah. Yeah. It, like it, he crushed all the bones in the leg or something. It just, no, it didn't look good. Yeah. But Mario kind of gets stuck in the oil as he's trying to get out. So he's stuck like right in the end. Joe's trying to climb out of the oil and he manages to get out. And then Mario has this plan to... It's like to pull the truck out. So he, like, drives, like, these poles into the ground and ties, like, this wire rope or something around them and then to the tires of the truck. Yeah. And tries to he pull to, himself like, out. He has to, like, dive under the oil. And I'm like, why are you even trying? You're not going to be able to see... Yeah. So I don't know why he was, like, trying to dunk his head under. Maybe just to get the cord around the tire or something, but I'm still just like, you're not going to be able to see under there. You just have to feel it. Pretty much. But, I mean, he does it anyway. Yeah, it, it works. He get, he puts uh, Joe in the truck because now he feels sorry for him because he's hurt him. Is it bad that, like, when there's pulling the truck out with the poles and the ropes and everything, the pole was starting, like, to slip? And trying to pull out. And in my head, I was thinking of horror films. And I'm thinking, <laughs> man, that would be so cool. Like, because I hate this dude. I'm like, it would be so cool if that pipe launched into the truck bed. Truck cab. <laughs> and just, like, went straight through the dude's head. <laughs> but I was thinking of, like, you know, classic horror films. You know, like yeah, Final Fantasy or something. Be, definitely be something <laughs> that would happen. Yeah. I, I thought that would be cool. But, you know. No, I didn't get that. I was kind of <laughs> disappointed there. 
So they're uh, driving along, and um, Joe's talking about how the rot is setting in to his leg, and Mario's like, no, that's just the uh, stink of the oil. And he, Mario's trying to keep Joe talking, and it gets dark, so we know it's nighttime now. And Joe dies. And then we see the fire at the oil rig thing. And Mario gets out and is talking to the guys and stuff. And then he gets a cigarette, and he's still covered in oil. Thank you. Smoking a cigarette. Thank you. I thought the same thing. I'm like, okay, so no logic at all. You're covered yeah. in oil, and you're going to l- almost light yourself on fire. Yeah. Real smart. And so Mario starts walking away, but he literally, like, falls asleep. Man, I want him to walk into the fire. Funny. I thought that's what he was doing. <sighs> I wanted him to. <sighs> I was like, walk into the fire and end this already. Yeah. But so, then the next morning he gets paid, and uh, the people working are all, like, clapping for him and stuff. And then he heads on his way back. Uh, Linda hears that he's on his way back, and so everybody starts dancing. They're all stupid, happy, and everything. And um, they're listening to the same song that Mario is listening to on the radio, and he's, like, swerving all over the road being an idiot. And he drives off a cliff. Yay! It was a a beautiful crash, I'm not gonna lie. I was so happy. Yeah, it was... Well, because they actually threw a truck off a cliff. Oh, I know. I know. And... Uh, Henry Clouseau was mad because it didn't fall the way he wanted it to. Well, you know what? <laughs> Suck it up. The dude's dead. It's fine. Yeah, and it was, I thought it was kind of funny because I had saw I had listened to something about this, and I was, like, laughing because he couldn't do it again because he only had the one truck to do it with in the first place, so he, was, he just had to put up with it. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of, kind of funny. But yeah, that's the end of the movie. We get a really awesome car crash at the end of the movie. And then kind of some not very good effects with the dead body. I was very happy. I was. I was ecstatic. I was like, yay! (laughs) They all died! I'm like, the dude died! Yay! Finally! (laughs) I was waiting the entire film. I was like, come on, this dude's such an asshole. Just die already. (sighs) I mean, I shouldn't wish death on anybody, but with this character, yes, I wanted him to okay, die. but this is a movie. You can wish death upon people in movies. I know. <laughs> so, the music um, is by G- George Arik. I'm sorry, I probably said that wrong. Uh, he is known for Frantic from 1988. Roman Holiday from 1953, and You, Me, and Dupree from 2006. Um, that one was after he had passed away. But, um, they just used some of, most of his music in the You, Me, and Dupree. His very first movie that he ever worked on was Anois La Liberate? Liberte? Something like that. Uh, that was from 1931. And honestly, I could care less about the music in this movie. I didn't like, notice it very much, actually. Yeah. The only really times I noticed it was the times when they were listening to it on the radio. That's about the rest it. rest of the time, I was just like, there's not really any music. So that's why I'm like, I could care less. It just was pretty much non-existent. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. We've had better scores. Let's just say that. We have. Yeah. So, this was actually a book called La Salary de la Pure. So, The Salary of Fear in French by uh, George Arnons. I tried to find it, but it was $60 in English, and I wasn't going to pay $60 for a book. Not that book. There are certain books I would pay $60 for. But not that. But not that book. So, um, there are actually two other movies. One of them is called The Sorcerer, which came out the same week as Star Wars. Which Star Wars? A New Hope. Oh, shit. (laughs) So, people 
were going to see that and going to see Star Wars, and they were disappointed because they thought they were kind of going to the same genre, and they really weren't. And then I don't know. The other one was like 1959 or something like that, so not very long after this one, so I don't know why they remade it so quick, but I couldn't really find any information on that movie. Okay. I like. I don't even remember what the name of it was or anything like that. Uh, something about driving. I know that. But apparently the one that came out the same week as Star Wars was just about as bad as this one. So the synopsis from IMDb for that is four unfortunate men from different parts of the globe agree to risk their lives transporting gallons of nitroglycerin across dangerous South American jungle. So yeah. It's literally the American version of it. It's um, directed by William Friedkin, uh, stars Roy Sh- Schreider, Bruno Kramer, and Francisco Rabal, and it has a 7.7. Huh. And it's actually a little bit shorter. So, for us, it might have actually been better. I don't know. I didn't get the chance to watch it. Yeah, I didn't watch that either. I barely struggled through this. No, I really no, struggled I through this. Correction. Didn't know about it till late last night, and I was like, uh, I'm not gonna try and get that done. Nope. I was doing other things last night. Trivia. I know you said a few already. Yeah, the one with the uh, the car accident, and then the um, the oil. How they made the oil. Yeah. Oh, let's see, you all. Uh, this was uh, Vera's first film. You didn't know that. She only yeah. did three films. Because she died not long after that third one. Yeah. And we talked about that when we did Diabolique. Yeah. Same way, too. Amazing. Yeah. Um, what else was there? This was also... So, the main character, the one I hated, Mario... This is his first dramatic role because he's normally a singer. Yeah, I did hear that somewhere. He's a singer. I was like, okay, sure. Why not? Oh, yeah. How this was a freaking mess to film. Oh, yeah. I I remember. Like, this was so over budget. And they thought it wasn't even going to come out because they had to stop production for a while. Six months. It was stopped. Yeah. It took, like, so they started filming in, like, August of 51, and it was supposed to go for, like, nine weeks. And then all kinds of shit just happened. Like, it was super rainy, um, the director broke his ankle, Vera was sick. There was a lot of people getting sick because of where they were filming at, and, like, all the stuff that they were using to make it look so dirty there. Yeah. Like, it was filmed in France. It was supposed to be filmed in, uh, Spain, but since... Franco was in power, so the direct, like, some of the actors were like, we're not, I don't want to film there. I refuse to. So that's why they had to move it to, um, southern France. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah, they finished this movie, like, a year later, after production started. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding? I do have one more. This is about the director. I don't remember if we talked about it with Diabolique. But after, because he's married to, he was married to Vera. Yes. But after she died, he did a couple of more movies, but everybody said that they just weren't up to his, like, the normal standards of what they thought his movies were. So after he did those last couple movies after she died, he just stopped because she was his muse, pretty much. Like, she was the reason he did movies. So I thought that was kind of sweet. That is very sweet of him. That is. I mean, she only did three movies. Yeah. Three. She died in 1960. Yeah. And then he died, what, 17 years later, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But I thought that was kind of like a little sweet trivia that he was just so dedicated and in love with her that he couldn't do it without her. Yeah. Do you have anything else for trivia? Nah. Okay. <laughs> So, where it has been on the list before and today where it's at. The 2010 list, it was number 179. 2012, it wasn't even on the list. 2014, it was number 161. 2016, it was number 190. 2018, it was number 205. And as of today, when we are recording, it is number 196. 
So it's dropping. And it was dropped completely off the list. I mean, it did for uh, 2012. It was off the list unless I just missed it somewhere. That needs to happen again. <laughs> um, previously, number 194 from the 2010 list, La Strada from 1954. The 2012 list, Slumdog Millionaire from 2008. The 2014 list, The Best Years of Our Lives from 1946, which we have had before. The 2016 list, In the Name of the Father from 1993, which is coming up. And the 2018 list, Stalker from 1979, which is coming up, actually next. And then as of today, when we are recording, number 194 is Toy Story 4 Aww. from 2019. And I was like, ah, oh, I appreciate that one, because I think that one's good. I liked it, I liked too. That, one. that was a good movie. I liked it. So, favorite line. I have six. Women are a waste of time for guys like us. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. I was kind of mad at that. Yeah, I know. That's why I wrote it down. Um, it only takes a few months to be a hundred if you're in the right place at the right time. I just thought... Yeah, I remember hearing that. I was like, what the... I was reading that. I was like, what? I was like, well, I mean, you might feel that old if you've gone through a lot of things lately. Yeah. I understood that. Um, it's terrible to rot alive. Oh, yeah, I remember. Um, if only you had balls, too. I'm not gonna lie, that made me giggle. Um... Play with fire and you end up getting burned. Yeah, I, I was gonna write that one down, but then I was like, no, that one's really cliche. It is. So I wrote it down. And this is one's my favorite. If I gotta be a corpse, I want to be presentable. I wrote that one down to you. I liked that one a lot. Yeah. I was like, that makes complete sense. That one fell right out of a coconut tree. That made me kind of laugh. A bunch of belly acres. When I need dough, I get mean. And I didn't realize, like, quite how that was. Like, um... I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But, you know, because that was um, Joe that said that. And then later on, he just becomes this big sissy. Yeah, like I said earlier, character development for that dude went right out out the the window. window. Uh, even when they guillotine you, they dress you up first. This one I just thought was kind of weird, and I was like, what? When I- I had to literally go back and make sure I read it right. Then you take a girl into the corner and give her a tickle. (laughs) I I had to go back, because I was like, what? Yeah, that's right. That's the right line. I remember it. Yeah. He's drunk or scared stiff. Um, I've died 50 times since last night. That's Mr. Wimpy Joe. Uh, Breathing breathing the smell of your stinking feet. I thought that one was funny. (laughs) But I will admit my favorite one is if I gotta be a corpse, I want to be presentable. Yeah. That one's my favorite. Mine too. All right, so your rating. The only reason why I'm giving it this rating is because of the end that made me happy. So I'm giving this a two because, I again, I felt like I lost two and a half hours of my life and I'm never going to get back. And that pisses me off. The only reason it gets two is because of the end where the dude dies <laughs> off a cliff. That's it. That's all I got for this. Okay. I am giving it a five because, like I said, I did, didn't quite enjoy it as much as the other film from Clouseau. I didn't like it as much as Diabolique, but also our last film, I liked it more than Ben-Hur because it wasn't quite as drug out. Like, I do feel like the beginning of this movie was pretty much unnecessary because the character development just was not very good, but I appreciated his attempts at the suspense in... The truck driving, it just, it didn't come across as well as I think he meant it to. So, the last 
like hour and a half when they were in the truck, I was actually somewhat interested in the movie. But the first hour, I just wish was not there. So I'm going with a five for this one. I was just so done by then. I was like, no. <laughs> no. Just done. So our next film is Stalker from 1979. And this is in Russian. So um, that'll, this is going to be our first Russian film. It is our first fun. Russian film, yeah. And I believe it is a book as well. Yeah, it is. But that's another one I've been trying to find it, and it's nearly impossible to find the English version, so I'll just have to see if I can find a comparison for it. So that'll be out next Saturday, Stalker from 1979. So our next event coming up is our Halloween event, which will be out on Halloween. The two movies that I picked for this one are Beetlejuice and Hereditary. And I picked Young Frankenstein and A Nightmare on Elm Street. And if you would like to become a premium member, you can do so by going to Podbean, um, our website, catandjesttalkedbest.podbean.com, and then it's going to be over on the right side, kind of down at the bottom. There's two different plans we have. The first plan is a dollar a month, and you will get uncut episodes, early release episodes, when I am able to get them out. Um, and then also a very a special monthly episode every month. Uh, this month is September and we're doing one of the movies that Jess thought was going to be on the list, which is Wrist Cutters, a love story. Yep. And it's a good month for it because September is uh, Suicide Prevention Month. Yes. And that's about suicide. Just a heads up there. <laughs> yeah. So you can get all of that for a dollar a month, and then for five dollars a month you get all of that, plus you are able to join us for a movie of your choice every 50 movies. So if you want to check either of those out, you, like I said, you can go to our website and subscribe there to the premium plans. Um, or if you just want to hear our thoughts on wrist cutters, that will be available for just one dollar as a bonus episode. If you could leave us some ratings and reviews, that would be great. We'd be able to get some more listeners. Uh, the more ratings and reviews we get, the more our show gets put out there. Also, if you could share the show with your friends, that would be great. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can talk to us there. Or you can email us, catandjesstalkthebest250 at gmail.com. I'm going to go ahead and read our line one more time. Make sure you submit which movie you think it's from. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. <laughs> I actually know which film this is from already, but I won't say anything. <laughs> and then our music is by Audio Binger, and you can find him on Facebook, YouTube, and his website, audiobinger.net. Thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. And we'll catch you next week with Stalker. Bye. Bye.